Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're spanning the globe. It's Thursday at lunch in Seattle. We're, yesterday I was uh, educated that we're GMT or UTC minus eight this time of year from London. So it's uh, our midday, it's mid-afternoon on the East Coast, evening in Europe, and early, early, early morning over in Asia. So thanks for joining us. I'm a little bit of housekeeping up front. Be sure to use the questions feature to ask your questions, <coughs> and we'll answer those as uh, we go along. And then also um, join us next week. So Wednesday we have Carl Palachak is the sixth installment of the popular MSP Tech Talk series. Um, Carl's going to talk about business topics for MSPs, branding, and some other issues. Always a popular speaker. We actually saw Carl on Tuesday in Seattle today. He is in Portland doing his one-day SMB Roadshow. And then on Thursday, uh, we also have another webinar. We'll get you information on that. So it's a double dip next week. Um, I am locked and loaded for Inspire in Washington, D.C., uh, starting uh, be, be there July 9th through the 12th. So I look forward to seeing people at Inspire, formerly known as WPC. And then finally, um, on the housekeeping front, CompTIA Channel Con. CompTIA Channel Con in Austin, uh, July 31st through August 2nd. So we'll see you there. Got a booth and, and, and all that. With that said, let's just jump right into it as, as we like to do. We have uh, Blake joining us today from Veeam to talk about um, availability. And uh, Blake, we were just chit-chatting that, um, why, why, why don't you share briefly, you're based in Atlanta, and why, you know, to kind of get in the community spirit, why don't you share that you, your, your roads are working again? What was that all about? The <laughs> contractor got done ahead of schedule? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm based in Atlanta, and and as some people may have seen on the on the the national, sometimes global news, we uh, had a little issue with part of our interstate falling falling off, <laughs> a, a, an overpass on one of the busiest interstates in Atlanta, uh, kind of just uh, caught on fire and uh, fell into the uh, into the ground underneath it. So uh, that was a few months ago. Luckily, they uh, they were able to get everything up and running really quickly, able to. Uh, uh, provide some pretty significant monetary incentives uh, to the uh, to the contractors to get their job done really quickly. Uh, so Atlanta traffic is back to normal, which is to say it's it's still pretty terrible, but at least it's not as, <laughs> as terrible as it was before. All right. Well, hey Blake, you got the talking stick. Let's just jump right into it. These people like the good stuff. Let me tell you. Right on. Appreciate it. Um, so, hey, everyone. My name is Blake. Um, I am uh, a part of the competitive intelligence team here at Veeam. So I've actually been with Veeam about seven years now. So the first first half of that stint or so was uh, actually doing um, uh, systems engineering, part of a system engineering group that supported uh, some of our platinum partners. We didn't call them platinum partners back then. We didn't really have a name for them. We just, you know, these were like the top five or six guys that tended to sell a lot of Veeam, so you're going to get some special treatment, and you're going to get managed, and you're going to get a dedicated engineer, and that was kind of my job for, for the first three or four years, really kind of building out our, our channel practice and our solutions practice. Um, I moved over to the, the product marketing team, the competitive intelligence team specifically, uh, about three or so years ago. have been doing that ever since. Uh, it's very different, very fun, but uh, I get to, to sleep in my own bed most nights, which is very different than, than when you're a system engineer. So. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our competition, about uh, uh, why availability beats legacy backup. And you're going to kind of see this this term availability. We've we've thrown it out there. It's been in the market for uh, for a few years now, and a lot of people kind of get confused or they want some further explanation as to what availability means and and why availability is different than just backup. And you know. To that, I can say one of two things, right? Number one, it's it's marketing, right? It's it's just our way of saying, hey, you know, it's backup, but it's also replication. It's DR, it's DR as a service or backup as a service. If you're a managed service provider, it's uh, all of the the kind of adjacent technologies and capabilities that kind of align kind of with backup, but um, are a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more advanced, and and tend to uh, uh, really hone in on a lot of the the business problems that uh, enterprises, commercial organizations, and even SMBs are are facing in, in relation to data protection, right? So it's it's kind of this maybe one step further up 
like higher level where it's encompassing all these things and you know we call it availability because you know things need to be up and running things need to be available today uh, when a lot of us started our careers right you had backup windows and those backup windows were maybe every night from like 7 p.m. when everyone had gone home for the night uh, to maybe 8 a.m. the next morning when they get back in the office and that's not necessarily possible anymore. Everything's kind of 24 seven now, everything's always on. So those backup windows can't really exist. You have to be able to back up during production. You have to be able to replicate during production and, and initiate restores and do all of these things without it actually uh, impacting the production uh, storage or production virtual infrastructure or whatever it happens to be. Um, so that's kind of, when we say availability, it's, it's kind of what we mean. Um, but it's you know by no means this this magical thing that Veeam just invented. It's it's just taking a bunch of our capabilities, our technologies, and and procedures that we've uh, come to really you know uh, perfect over the years and presenting them in a, a slightly different way. So when we really um, uh, look at how we differentiate ourselves versus our competition, and when I say we, I mean me pretty much. So I kind of sat down and figured out all right what. What are, are the top kind of five, six, seven things that we can use to, to really call out the differences between Veeam's solutions and we'll say legacy backup. And by legacy backup, I, I typically mean any organization that you know, has been around since kind of that client server era, that, that 1980s, 90s, 2000s, uh, you know, when, when those products were built with agents and, and tape was still kind of the, the main thing you used to back up and those backup windows were you know, the way that they were, like I just talked about. Uh, legacy backup is, is those organizations that haven't necessarily advanced their technologies at the pace that other technologies have, have moved forward, right? So virtualization is, is, is ubiquitous now. It's, it's everywhere, it's table stakes. You have to be virtualized. Um, there's always that one little small percentage of stuff you can't virtualize, unfortunately, but, you know, we focus on those uh, a little bit later on. Um, but, you know, virtualization is one of those things that, that everyone's doing these days, and you have to have a solution that was specifically designed to, to protect those virtual workloads, whether they're, they're on-premises or in the cloud or, or whatever the hypervisor is, there needs to be some dedicated solution. So we kind of started this whole thing, right? And when we talk about availability, um, that is one of the core tenets of availability. It's, it's, it's dedicated um, uh, backup and replication for, for virtual machines. Uh, again, regardless of the hypervisor, we do VMware and Hyper-V and we'll soon do some stuff in, up in AWS and, and Azure and all that, but really, we don't really care, right? We just need to protect those workloads as they are. So uh, availability being that, that, that uh, capability to specifically protect those those workloads with those specific tools without the use of agents without the use of media servers and all that kind of stuff um, that's kind of how we differentiate ourselves from legacy backup kind of kind of going down and we'll talk about uh, each one of these a, a little bit more in depth here but um, around innovation everyone knows Veeam's story or, or if you don't then you're gonna learn it uh, around how we we typically innovate how we bring new capabilities and new products to market faster than pretty much any availability or data protection product out there. You know, we typically have a new release uh, once every year or so, uh, once every 13, 14 months or so. And with that new release, we have a, a slew of new capabilities that come along with it. Um, what we find is that our, our biggest competitor in any particular deal um, isn't, you know, necessarily a Commvault or a Veritas or an EMC. Our biggest competitor in any particular deal is whatever that customer already has in there, right? That, that status quo. That's the most difficult thing to sell against because you're dealing with, you know, the person that bought that product before or the group of people that brought that pro bought that product before and they were happy with it when they made the decision to buy it. A lot of thought went into it, a lot of money, a lot of research went into it. There's implementation of it. Uh, there's a lot of backups. Maybe they've got years of backups in the format of this other product. So, so getting it out of there and getting Veeam in is, is a, a very difficult story to tell sometimes, no matter how good our technology is um, or, or how much time and, and energy is going to be saved by the, the IT staff that, that is going to be actually managing the backups. Um, so, you know, we've got some stories around ROI, around TCO, around how we can go in and displace legacy backup and it can pay for itself over the course of, you know, 16 months, 18 months, whatever. But that, that status quo is the most difficult thing for us to, to really 
you know, sell against. Uh, so that's the that's the the fun thing we get to talk about here in a little while. Um, we talk about Veeam's growth, right? I'll show you some numbers from from Gartner and, and from other places that show we're just growing like crazy, right? And nearly 30% every year. No other uh, enterprise software company uh, our age and our size is doing that, much less anybody in the backup space. So when you talk about that versus these kind of uncertain futures of of some of the legacy uh, backup, legacy data protection vendors that have had consolidation in their industry, have had kind of splitting off into two different companies, have had uh, shareholder issues and have had lawsuit issues and have had issues with private equity coming in and trying to overtake things. There's a lot of uncertainty around the, uh, uh, the, the future of data protection. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to kind of position ourselves and how you can position Veeam to your customers uh, to kind of ease any of that uncertainty. Um, simplicity versus complexity is, is one that's very near and dear to our heart. Obviously, uh, you know, you, the, the tagline you might see around Veeam is it just works. You know, so we see that in a lot of our, our SMB targeted materials. Uh, for a very good reason. It just works. It really does. It's, it's You click a bunch of times to install the product, you click a few more times to set up a backup job and to start backing up a VM, and then you click a few more times if you need to restore a virtual machine or, or do anything uh, around testing that virtual machine or whatever it is you need to do. It, it's incredibly intuitive and straightforward and easy to use, um, unlike a lot of the, the kind of legacy competitors that have uh, multiple different you know, databases. There's a dedupe store, there's media servers, there's agents. There's all of these things that kind of have to work together in order to, to make that solution work properly. And if one of those things doesn't work like it's supposed to be working, then you, you've got a problem, right? You've got some kind of issue that ends up causing failed backups and all that. So, so that's really key to us. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, kind of piggybacking on that is capabilities, right? Capabilities versus these, these lack of important features that a lot of the legacy guys have. So we'll talk about the, the uh, kind of tying back into the innovation stuff, the stuff that we brought first to market that no one else has done, and some stuff that we just tend to do better than everyone else. Um, reliability versus guesswork. So we'll show you some, some numbers around um, how often customers are able to hit their, their RPOs and RTOs and SLA numbers and things like that, uh, specific to Veeam versus their previous legacy solution. The, the numbers are pretty, you know, they, they speak for themselves. And then specifically around uh, customer satisfaction, we've got some, some numbers that show uh, that, that customers are, are more likely to rebuy Veeam or, or to buy Veeam again if they were faced with the same situation than any other data protection product out there. And um, we'll talk about some, some tech support stuff and, and things like that, because we really do believe that tech support is, is a critical component to any uh, availability solution. So we've got a, a great story to tell there as well. So with that, kind of the kind of the rundown, and then we'll, you know, not here on the on the agenda here, but we'll talk about some promos and other things that we have uh, kind of coming up that's going to allow you guys to make a little more money, which is what is you know we're all here for. So specifically looking at, at availability, right? We've got this kind of high level message, right? Veeam is a solution that was specifically designed for the the modern, highly virtualized hybrid cloud world. Now, a few years ago, that's, that would have been a little different, right? Veeam has a solution that is specifically designed to back up VMware virtual machines, right? Uh, but we've since expanded the capabilities into, into other hypervisors uh, coming uh, not too far down the road. We'll have a solution that's specifically designed to protect uh, agentlessly with, with snapshots, just like you're able to do on-premises with VMware and Hyper-V. Um, workloads running in AWS, which is something a lot of our customers have asked for and, and it's something we're uh, putting out there because they've asked for it. They've asked for it, uh, partners have asked for it. It's incredibly important as, as SMBs, as commercial organizations in particular, uh, start running a lot more of their production workloads in the cloud, right? Rather than just having a, a solution that is able to back up to the cloud, basically using the cloud as a, as a uh, alternative to tape, right? Uh, having those native cloud native workloads up there, being able to protect those agentlessly is going to be key uh, coming down the road to really drive adoption of cloud technologies. For our uh, our MSPs that are on the line, and I know uh, quite a few of you are, um, being Cloud Connect uh, kind of enables uh, both of those things, right? And enables uh, a customer to use your data center as a, a repository, as a target for an off-site backup if they don't have that, or a replication target for disaster recovery, so you can provide 
DR as a service, you can provide backup as a service to back up their on-premises VMs to your data center, or you can just manage everything for them, right? If, if you've got customers where you are managing their virtual infrastructures in your data center and they're just dialing into it and using everything, you can provide that service directly there as well. So every kind of cloud is kind of covered there, right? That, that local on-premises, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, cloud. <laughs> um, then you've got the kind of managed service cloud that you guys would be running, and you've got that giant hyperscale public clouds out there. Hey, Blake. Um, yeah. What I was going to do is uh, thank you for speaking English properly and saying on premises. Ah. Um, <laughs> a lot of people call it on premise, and Boy, the when when I used to do some writing for Microsoft Press, you know, the meetings we were in, if the walls could talk, let me tell you. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Over those kind of things, but I just wanted to give you a shout out on that, and uh, you know, don't don't forget, we we fancy ourselves as a fun community, so you're welcome to have a little fun as well. But please continue. <laughs> thank you, thank you, absolutely. Much noted. Um, so yeah, when we talk about, uh, uh, and I'm trying to avoid like super overly uh, annoying RTPOs and SLAs and RPTOs and all these kind of things. Uh, you see the term RTPO within Veeam. It, it, we just kind of took RPO and RTO and crammed them together since the majority of folks' RPOs and RTOs tend to be the same anyway. If they're 15 minutes, if they're two hours, whatever. Uh, so you might see that, that, that acronym kind of thrown out there. Um, but through some IDC research, and this is out on Veeam.com, if you're, uh, I can even provide the link afterwards to, to go check it out, 91% um, of Veeam customers are hitting their RTPOs uh, when using Veeam compared to 70% of the time when they were using whatever legacy provider they were using before, right? And this could run the gamut of any any uh, kind of legacy competitive product that's out there. Um, but we just wanted to, to specifically call out that number because 91% is a pretty big number. Right, and this is across all sizes of customer, all geographic distributions. There's no scoping down or any kind of bias or anything built in there. That is from you know, Steve and Joe Bob's used car lot down the street to Fortune 100 companies, right? They're able to kind of all fit in there and hit their SLAs 91% of the time. So we're pretty, uh, we're pretty proud of that. We talked about our, our innovation a little bit there before. Um, so. We don't typically do uh, forward-facing roadmaps like, like a lot of organizations uh, might do. Number one, because they always get leaked and then that kind of takes the air out of all the, the cool stuff that you unveil you know, at, at the conferences or at, uh, you know, through a press release or a web webinar or whatever it happens to be. So we don't typically do kind of public uh, forward roadmaps. Uh, but what we do is uh, we kind of hone in on what we've done really well in the past, right? We've got this kind of reverse roadmap, we like to call it. So starting back at, at version one and going all the way up to the current version of, of 9.5, you can kind of see those, those, that history of innovation that's, that's come alongside Veeam. So all the ones in bold there are actually technologies Veeam invented, Veeam patented, Veeam didn't exist before Veeam was able to come and uh, uh, bring that technology to the market. So things like, you know, just having two-in-one backup and replication in a product. That was always two products before, and in most cases, it's still two products. There's still very few uh, uh, availability providers of any kind that provide uh, backup and replication in one product and don't try to nickel and dime for each uh, capability. They don't necessarily always do it right. Um, and uh, with version 10, which isn't on this chart, because again, we don't do forward-facing stuff publicly, um, we're going to be leveraging some of the, the really cool new APIs that vSphere provides uh, for us to do IO filtering and super fast replication. So, so think about uh, products like, like Zerto and uh, RecoverPoint, RecoverPoint for VMs. We're, we're going to be able to provide that same level of RPO natively built into the product uh, effectively for free, right? It, it's built in there. I mean, you can't take it out, so you can't, you know, <laughs> buy Veeam backup and replication and just not use the replication component and expect you're going to get a refund. We don't do it that way, but uh, we do pride ourselves in, in building that integration into there. And I'm certainly not going to go through each one of these because it'll be the whole hour, but, uh, you, you know, you've got all the cool stuff that we've uh, been able to, to bring to market. And again, we're pretty proud of them. The Veeam Explorers are big things there. Uh, Cloud Connect, obviously, for any service provider is going to be key uh, to really enable your your uh, uh, cloud business to work properly with Veeam. 
we talked about our growth. Our growth is just crazy right now. I mean, we're adding over 4,000 users a month at this point. Uh, we were up to over 230,000 customers. These numbers were actually, I think this was actually earlier this year, so that number is, is substantially higher now. Um, uh, 45,000 of you guys, of Veeam Pro partners throughout the world that, that are amazing. actually selling our activity, selling our stuff. That's crazy. 45,000. Um, and what's even crazier is that that bottom number that keeps growing even faster than their actual customer number in terms of like percentage is the number of Veeam Cloud Service Provider partners that are enrolled in the program. 14,300 now globally. And of those, I want to say almost 3,000 now actually provide uh, Veeam Cloud Connect services to their customers, to their tenants. So you can be a, a Veeam Cloud Service Provider and just sell the stuff, or you can actually provide the services that tie to it. So there's a a smaller subset of folks that do those. Yeah, I have a couple couple of thoughts on this. Is is you know you know the communities that of the MSP and partners and so on. So this is this is a relevant slide. Um, you recently had a partner conference, and I forget where it was, but I was surprised at how big it was. Was that that was within the last thirty days, right? You had your yeah, so your partner yeah, conference? that's our, our Vmon Vmon conference. It was down in New Orleans this year. It was a uh, just oh last month. man. God, I wish I'd gone. I love New Orleans. Um, and, Chicago and I think next I, year. So, uh, I'm not going to go. No. <laughs> 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 um, but the, uh, boy, was it 5,000 partners? I, I had studied that. I looked over the website. I mean, it, it was a handsome conference. You know, boy, yeah, howdy. Yeah, we put, this, we, it's only the third or fourth, third time we've done it. Um, so we've, we've put a, a lot of effort into it. We lose a lot of money on every year because it costs a whole lot more than we bring in in terms of, like, you know, uh, ticket tickets and sponsors and things like that. But it's not something meant to, to make money for us. It's, it's, a, it's an awareness uh, uh, event that we actually even let our competitors attend, right? We, we don't want to position it as a Veeam event. It's an industry availability event. So... Uh, we have guest speakers and um, uh, keynote speakers. We had uh, Mark Yersinovich from Microsoft. We had uh, some folks from HPE, uh, from uh, EMC, and, and from others. So, I mean, there are uh, lots of, of good things happening, I guess I'll say, uh, yeah. within the, the conference uh, uh, situation that we uh, we keep building up. And a lot of our competitors well, I... have actually started, started doing it themselves. You see Commvault now has a conference. Zerto has a conference. Uh, oh yeah, catching up. We like it. Yeah, we see that all the time. How? Uh, what's the secret to your success with this kind of growth? I mean, I've certainly known your name over the years, but then I I, I was blindsided by how big you guys have gotten. You know, it's 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 impressive. Yeah. Why is that? So it's it's a combination of a couple things. It's it's a combination of having a great product, right? First and foremost, like our our R and D folks are just nuts. Like they they. I, there are some of them that are based in Europe that I, I get emails from at 9 a.m. my time and 9 p.m. my time. I, I don't know when they sleep. Like, I have no idea what they actually are, are doing out there. But um, they, they would just work relentlessly to, uh, to appease as many people as possible. So we have a, a very open um, uh, method of kind of collecting feature requests and, and anything that a customer or a partner wants to see within the product itself has a very good chance if, if more than a couple of people want that feature, if you just want one thing, if you want this this text to be pink or something, we're not going to do it. But if there's something very specific that is going to benefit one customer, uh, we'll, we'll do our best. It may not be in the next version, but it might be in the version after that to integrate that within the product. So just being very responsive and agile and, and in tune to what the community wants is, is key. Um, and then secondly is something we found out very early on is that um, – we can't scale at a sales level without our partners, right? Yeah. So we found out really early, right? We can have 30 sales guys. Great. We have 30 sales guys. They can make 50 calls a day, right? So they're touching that many people. But if we have those same 30 sales guys calling 50 partners a day and those 50 partners each have 300 customers and it, it spreads out way, way faster and way quicker. So, so we learned that very early on. Um, we actually don't have a direct sales force at all. We don't compete with you. We can't sell our own product. <laughs> we have to go through the, the distribution of the channel partner, partner uh, to, to actually get that product to the yeah. end user. So it, it, it works really well. And I think uh, some experimentation with other companies that are, 
our principals owned uh, early on led to some of those decisions to, to be channel only from the very beginning, and that just really got us off on the right foot. Well, and I'll end on this on, the, on this you know particular topic is that uh, we've seen ISVs, OEMs, uh, I'll even throw DISTIs in there that you know channel is always really good at executing and perhaps uh, evangelizing. Right, once they get behind something, they get excited about it and they evangelize it. But um, a lot of ISVs will be disappointed about sales you know that the cha they're, they're like well why don't these computer guys sell well the you know computer guys tend to be technical by nature they like to do um, but it sounds like maybe you found that balance maybe maybe you've even cracked the code but you know if if you've been able to turn a channel into a sales force and I know you know on the whiteboard that's what they're supposed to be <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But you know, if if you built that kind of trust and, and 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 respect in the community, and they're they're taking it to the next level, you know, God, you should bottle that water, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things that that kind of just coincide to make it work, right? The, the the simplicity of the licensing model is is pretty key as well, right? We sell per socket for for the most part. Our our core products, you know, the the Veeam backup and replication availability suite, all that kind of stuff, uh, they're just per socket. For however many VMware or Hyper-V sockets you have, so there's not, you know, that that sales rep doesn't need to have a, a giant Excel document open at all times to understand what different components he's going to quote his customer to 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 get them the solution that they they need. They just say, yeah. how many sockets you got? You need 15 sockets. Here you go, 15 sockets, right? One SKU, one line item on one quote. It's it's incredibly straightforward, incredibly easy. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, let's continue. Sounds yeah. good. So kind of in relation to all of this, right, everybody loves the Gartner slide. You've got to have a Gartner slide in there somewhere, right? Even if you're talking to SMB folks or commercial folks, that Gartner isn't that important to them. Uh, it, it's, it is important to those enterprise folks, and we're finding that out in a hurry. You know, as we, <laughs> we started out in SMB, and, and our core customer is still an SMB customer. It's still that, that kind of sub 100-person uh, shop out there. But as we, we continue to, to grow into the enterprise, as we continue to, to build out our enterprise sales model and, and bring on enterprise sales folks and engineers and people that know what they're doing in those large accounts, um, we're starting to get recognized more. And, and with that, we're building new capabilities into the product that actually work in the enterprise, you know, that, that scale out, uh, I don't want to say infinitely, but to scale out a lot more horizontally than than we've been able to in the past and, and features that enterprises really require and, and lean on. So with that, you know, we start getting recognized by, by Gartner, uh, by, by IDC, by Ovum, by pretty much anyone out there that, that tracks data protection, uh, either market share or capabilities or, or momentum or however you want to put it. Uh, we're kind of in that, that, that quadrant, that leader's quadrant or that, that far up and to the right uh, 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 section of, of whatever it is graph that they have and, and we're pretty proud of that. So this is from, from the 2016 uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant where we kind of entered into that leader's quadrant. The 2017 one will be out relatively soon I believe so we'll, we'll know where we land there uh, in relation to some of our competitors uh, quite soon there. So kind of in relation to this We've got some market share data, and this is really, really new, actually. It's, um, uh, I just got it a couple of days ago. Um, and apologies for some holes in it. So the, the way that uh, Gartner is very, you know, they're Gartner, right? So, so they uh, kind of explicitly said, even though Veritas, you know, in 2014 and 2015 was semantic, and I could just put the numbers for semantic in there and it would make sense, uh, I couldn't do that because it's Veritas. So since this is something that's publicly facing, we have to do what they say. So there's a bunch of holes there where you see Veritas doesn't have numbers for 2014 and 15. Dell EMC, um, again, I could have just taken the Dell numbers and the EMC numbers from 2014 and 15 and put them together and, and called it a day, but that's not the way it works. Uh, conversely, the 2016 number under Dell EMC is, is really only the stuff that they sold while they were Dell EMC. So there's still Dell uh, stuff out there. Uh, if you think of the uh, the, the recently spun off um, uh, Quest products, right, the uh, Aperture and V-Ranger and some other things. Uh, and then there's EMC products as well that, that aren't included in this number. So for full transparency, uh, if you included all of those, Dell EMC would actually be number two and IBM would be number one. But the important thing and the only thing I care about is that we are number four. Right? We, are, we are one uh, above of one of the, the largest, most well-known enterprise 
uh, data protection providers out there in Commvault, uh, we actually leapfrogged them this year in, in terms of growth. And if you look at some of the growth numbers, and again, uh, fortunately, there's not 2014 and 15 data for some of these. Uh, overall, the market is kind of up and down, right? It, it dropped quite a bit for pretty much everyone in 2015, except for Veeam. We actually increased uh, by 24%. Uh, and in 2016, they have the same song and dance, right? We increased 27%, uh, but the market as a whole uh, kind of recovered a little bit uh, as well. So everyone is still kind of at their their pre-2015 uh, levels, but uh, they're still not obviously growing nearly the way that, that Veeam is. So just, I like numbers. I like throwing them out there, and it, it makes us look cool. And then I mentioned IDC and Ovum. Um, uh, we're up there at the top right of their respective graphs as well. So it's always good to see. There you go. Yeah. So simplicity. Like I, I'm, I'm so about this, right? Because I used to be a sales engineer with Veeam, and you know, my job was demoing the product to, to customers that had never seen it before. It was installing that product in their environment when they had hardly ever heard of Veeam. They just knew we did some kind of backup. So I'm going in there completely blind into a POC. And, and walking this customer through the initial installation, the configuration, setting up the database, uh, going through and running backup jobs and initiating restores. And the fact that you can do all of that, say, within an hour was pretty mind-blowing to most of them because a lot of them are used to one or two days of initial setup and configuration and, and professional services and all that stuff to, to get up and running where we can kind of come in and, and, you know, install quicker than Microsoft Office and be up and running as quickly as possible. It's, it's, it's a real value add from our perspective. From your perspective, if you're a, a, a partner that provides services as part of your business, uh, not so great, right? <laughs> you you want to be able to charge for professional services. So uh, we're actually internally working on uh, a game plan around that, right, where there's a lot of, of moving parts that can be deployed with the Veeam installation. You can be very simple and very straightforward with how you configure Veeam and get it up and running, or depending on the complexity of the environment, it's going to require some, some additional solution architecture, right? Multiple proxies and repositories and scale out backup repositories and all of this kind of uh, stuff that needs to be able to work together, not to mention all the networking capabilities of, of virtual labs and automated testing. And, and there's a, a little bit of stuff that can actually be done uh, to, uh, to help you build out a solutions practice around Veeam's technologies and Veeam's capabilities. So we're well aware of the double-edged sword there of the ease of use. It's something we've been working on for quite a while. <laughs> so, so rest assured, you know, there, there's some programs in place and things moving forward uh, where you will be able to uh, make a little money on the side actually getting Veeam installed as opposed to just clicking next three or four times and then taking the customer to lunch and that's kind of it, right? So we're, we're all about the simplicity. Uh, obviously, with complexity being the the the, the opposite of that, uh, we try to avoid as much as possible. So even though the, the the things that we have within the product are robust and you can even say complex, the uh, actual implementation and the use of them is extremely straightforward. So that's what we always try to balance. And, you know, IDC again, right, two out of three Veeam customers spend 35% less time managing their infrastructure uh, when they use Veeam compared to their, their previous legacy solution. That's 35% less time that goes to, uh, uh, you know, doing stuff that actually matters, right? To, to doing stuff that's going to make money for the company as opposed to just babysitting backups. A lot of that has to do with uh, not having to, to manually test backups where we can do it automatically. A lot of it has to do with the, the cloud archival and, and tape archival capabilities of the product. A lot of time saving in there as well. So uh, we can always conduct our ROI analysis on things like that and uh, you know, show customers actual hard numbers versus what they've been using in the past. Uh, but it's you know, good, good for, you know, for the general public to know that, hey, if you use Veeam, odds are you're going to spend less time dealing with your backup stuff than you were if you were not. My favorite, all right, capabilities, all the cool stuff that we're able to do, right? We talk about 
instant agent list recovery for, for pretty much any tier one Microsoft application. So we're talking Exchange and SQL and Active Directory and SharePoint, all that, uh, even Oracle. We're able to actually do not only backups of that data agentlessly with nothing installed inside of that, that guest operating system that's running this application, but restores completely agentlessly. No boxes to tech, check, no installation of, of agents required, uh, no crazy stuff to do. It's literally just a, a separate application that opens up that's called, say, Veeam Explorer for Exchange that goes in, it opens up that Exchange backup, it does all the parsing it needs to do, and you're able to do whatever recovery that you need to do at a granular level of that application. So you need to restore a single email, fine, no problem. A single contact, a single uh, attachment out of an email, we can do all those things at that granular level without requiring a dedicated agent inside of that guest operating system. Now, that's something that, that most of our legacy competition still can't do, which is amazing in 2017 that they still require agents to do some of those things. Uh, and we've been doing it this way for uh, six or seven years now. Kind of crazy. Um, Built-in WAN acceleration that really helps you guys out that are that are serving up Veeam uh, as a as a solution for for your customers. So if you're using Veeam Cloud Connect, for example, you can throw a software-defined WAN accelerator between your site and that customer site, and get incredibly reduced bandwidth uh, requirements on both sites. And it's not just optimization or or you know, some deduplication that's occurring. It's actually proper WAN acceleration. It's doing caching on the source side and caching on the, on the target side, and it's just sending the data that's necessary to, to make that data whole again, right, when it gets to the remote location. So think about these big boxes that you had to buy in the past from Cisco and Riverbed and all these guys to do WAN acceleration. We're able to accelerate Veeam backup traffic and, uh, and, and replicas uh, natively within the, the, the interface itself, only using software. It's pretty cool. Uh, encryption, obviously super important these days. Scale up backup repository. Think, uh, you know, uh, taking a customer's multitude of different storage devices and abstracting them into one virtual backup storage device. That's what the scale up backup repository is, is able to do. So. It really goes to those those cost conscious customers. Say that three times fast. Uh, that you're really uh, having a hard time selling to because they are going to have to uh, buy brand new backup storage, or they're going to have to repurpose, or they're going to have to do something. They just take all those arrays, NetApp, EMC, we don't care what it is, uh, and we can abstract a, a, a layer of, of goodness in front of those to target those as, as a single backup repository. Um, we could even do tiering, right? So if, if one of those is maybe SSD and another one is SATA and maybe a third tier of, of some kind of fast SAS drives or something, we can actually do tiered based backups uh, that, that kind of archive off into slower tiers over time. So whenever you're doing a restore from yesterday or the day before yesterday or six minutes ago, you're restoring off of much faster storage and obviously the restore goes faster. So that's all kind of cool stuff. Um, and then obviously our, our integration with, with production storage arrays from, from NetApp and EMC and, uh, and Nimble and, and various others, HP, uh, alongside the backup storage integration, right? EMC Data Domain and Exagrid and Quantum and HP Store Once and all kind of goodness. We're able to really accelerate uh, not only the, the, the backing up process, right, but the restore process as well by integrating directly with those storage arrays if your customers have them. And then reliability. Hey, hey Blake. Yeah. Blake, I, I have a question, and forgive me. Um, would Would you like questions as they come in, or would uh, you like questions now. at the end? Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. Let's do them now. Let's do them now, just in case we we go long. We'll uh we'll do questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have Doug, and he asks. Uh, our customers are mostly single hypervisor. He mentions uh, Dell R seven twenties. Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes on to say with one to three VMs. Currently, we are not backing up to the cloud. How do I learn more about that aspect of Veeam? Sure. So, um, so a couple things. Right now, um, I guess it depends on how you define cloud, right? Everybody's got a definition for cloud that's, that's different. Uh, at the end of the day, it's just someone else's computer. Um, so right now, Veeam can back up to anything on premises, right? Any kind of uh, storage device that you can talk to your Veeam server with. 
uh, it can back up to any Veeam cloud service provider's storage, right? So, so they can have whatever storage they want. There's a secure connection that's made between the customer site and your site if you're a, a, the cloud storage provider or service provider uh, or, you know, somebody else if you're the, the actual customer. Um, where, where that backup can occur off-site or it can be archived off-site, so the backup is done locally first and then that copy gets created off-site just for kind of secondary storage. Um, if you want to back up, say, directly to uh, Azure or AWS, with AWS you'll need to wait for version 10, unfortunately. We, we don't, there are some kind of workarounds where you can have a, an AWS um, uh, uh, kind of cache device that, that uh, the Veeam backups go to, and then they're chopped up into tiny little blocks and sent up to AWS. The performance isn't great. Restores are terrible. Don't do that. Um, the proper AWS integration will be coming in a, in a, in a current, in a, in a coming version of Veeam. So it'll, it'll get there. Um, Veeam.com has pretty much any kind of answer uh, around that you'll, you'll want to see because some of the most recent announcements of which AWS integration is one uh, are right there on the main page and they'll take you to the, to the site for it. It's a really long URL and I couldn't say it out loud. It'd take too long. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So around reliability, right? Uh, no one is going to buy a backup product, right? And uh, you got to think about how important data protection is. A backup product is one of the most important enterprise software uh, purchases that an enterprise, a commercial customer or an SMB customer is going to make. Data is, is, without a doubt, the most important asset that an organization has, right? So it's got to be protected. Um, it's got to work, <laughs> right? So we, we talk to, to customers uh, and we ask them, you know, these are customers that have uh, these legacy backup technologies or they've been doing something using homebrewed something or another for the last few decades. And uh, we ask them, you know, how confident are you in your organization's actual uh, ability to rapidly or, or readily uh, back up and recover virtual machines or recover what you need uh, within whatever defined SLAs you have, if you have defined SLAs. Um, the results were kind of un uh, scary. 15% <laughs> said that they were very confident that they could actually do that, only 15%. I guess for us, we see that as, as uh, you know, hey, that's a lot of potential customers out there because there's a, a whole lot more that say that they aren't confident or somewhat confident or not very all confident. Um, that they can actually uh, do proper backups and do proper recoveries. I mean, that's kind of critical, kind of key to be able to do, right? So these legacy backup solutions, um, they don't have the, the uh, infrastructure monitoring, the automated backup testing, the recovery verification, all the stuff that Veeam has built into it uh, that really allows that organization to be in that green box there, that, that very confident 15% box. So, you know, don't let it up to guesswork, I guess, is, is the, the key result here from this slide. You know, Veeam is incredibly reliable. It seems to work really well for the customers that use it. Um, and have that conversation with your customers because uh, odds are they're doing something wonky or they're not doing enough to actually test and verify that the, the backups that they have are going to be good. Well, now, you know, it's, it's not a party until something breaks. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I, had, I had a customer in, uh, it was actually a government customer, so I can't say their name. It was down in uh, uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Um, they had oh, I, I, it had 30 or 40 hosts with several uh, thousands of VMs and several terabytes of data. Uh, their, their strategy for testing backups was uh, one weekend of every month, the entire IT team would come in on a Saturday and a Sunday, and they would manually verify 10% of their, their virtual machines. They would at random pick 10% of their critical virtual machines and uh, make sure that that they were recoverable, right? <laughs> they would restore them from tape, they would reboot them into some you know, sandbox environment, make sure that the data is good. Um, imagine what that costs, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, <laughs> you know, to have 40 people come in on a weekend, pay them time and a half, have to buy them pizza, have to do whatever, you know, to keep them happy. Uh, yeah. When Beam can just do it by itself, we can just automate that process. You know, 10%, sure, we can do 10%. We can do 100% if you want, if you really have the, the resources to do it. 
so it's, it's, it speaks volumes to how far we've kind of come with the capabilities of, of this product that, that a lot of people just sometimes aren't using. Every day, you know, I, I, I have a, uh, uh, to, to, to provide some context, I mean, I have a story about in the big data area, um, people were doing what they call record of pins or record overlays, basically adding more data to a record. And, and, and they, you know, you only know what you know, as, as it were, you don't know what you don't know. And, and, you know, there's tools that will do this automatically now, right? And, and, and so to have people doing it manually, and then I uh, expose them to a tool that will um, essentially snag information out of LinkedIn and put it into Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and, and they were blown away. And I mean, it's like, really? <laughs> so I, 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 I just wanted to support you that a lot of tools have been invented that will do stuff automatically. <laughs> yeah. need, there need to be more of them, because it's a good thing for sure. Yeah. Okay, my friend, please continue. This is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, this is the last, last one of our kind of, uh, kind of competitive values or whatever you want to call them. Um, customer satisfaction, right? People tend to like our stuff and they tend to be very satisfied with our, our tech support group uh, that's, that's all based out of Columbus, Ohio. They're, they're a, a great bunch of, of guys and girls. Uh, they actually overtook the entire floor that the, the marketing team and everything was on uh, uh, not too long ago. So we have a couple of floors in the building in Columbus. Um, and that team grew from something like 30 people to like 300 people in such a short period of time. They, they overtook the entire floor. So we had to go get another floor in the building to stash all the marketing people and some of the sales operations people and other stuff. So the, the tech support group within Veeam uh, gets kind of nothing but praise. And if you actually look at the the uh, the data the uh, the, the searchstorage.com you can actually go to searchstorage.com and, and look for this this report uh, or these awards and, and see the 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 competitors names there that I have chosen to hide to, to protect the guilty uh, Veeam is is by far and away you know number one there uh, when we're looking at tech support and we're by far and away number one when we're asking the question hey Mr customer would you buy this product again if you were faced with the same situation you were in the past would you buy this customer again? 96% of, of customers are saying yes, uh, they would buy Veeam again versus all these other guys down here. And it actually might be a fun game for you to, to try to match up which bar is which with which competitor, or you could just go to searchstorage.com and, and find out for yourself. We have it. Boy, that that would, well, I don't know if i call it a fun game, but there's, there's some in our community. There, there's a couple people on the line that would probably take you up on that. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. And then finally, you know, why, why, why sell me? Why, why listen to me for 50 minutes now? I mean, we've got all the the cool stuff that we talk about. You know, the fact the product is incredibly easy. Uh, the the partner program we have set up is actually incredibly easy with the tiering, with the discount levels, with deal registration. Um, that that idea, that engaging idea that we're 100 percent channel focused and that we don't have a direct sales force. We will never have a direct sales force. I can say that pretty confidently because it doesn't scale at the, the way that we need to scale in order to hit. We have this, this lofty goal of, of $1 billion in revenue per year by the year 2019. I think it keeps changing because it was 2020 to start and it was 2019. Now maybe 2018. I'm not sure. Um, but we've got this pretty lofty, lofty goal. Uh, uh, Ratmir actually calls it our BHAG, our big, hairy, audacious goal to, to hit $1 billion in revenue per year, uh, not total, per year for, uh, for, for the short period of time. So we need you guys. Um, the partner program itself, uh, it's incredibly predictable. There's communication. There's, there's a set number of promos and things like that that are run every, every quarter um, that uh, you know, we usually extend and we do all kind of stuff for you. So just keep an eye out, propartner.veeam.com. If you, you haven't been there or haven't signed up for it, all the good stuff is there. Uh, and then we'll generally make you money. Right, so we'll, we'll link you money in terms of, of deal registration. Um, we'll do uh, some additional margin for alliance attached. So if you sell Veeam along with some of our alliance partners like, like HPE and, and Cisco, we'll actually give you some additional margin there. 
Uh, we'll give you additional margin if you, you bring a customer, customer to us. So we call it a, an MBO, a new business opportunity, where you get an additional six points uh, if you're bringing a customer to Veeam that Veeam doesn't know about or Veeam hasn't talked to, I believe, in the last two years. So there's all kinds of different ways to kind of stack, and they're all stackable, uh, different discounts uh, into, into this program to make as much money as possible uh, for you guys. And I talk about kind of uh, those, those technologies, the hardware partners, the adjacent technologies. This is where a lot of people find out that they can actually make money in a solution, not necessarily just selling Veeam. Because in a backup solution, typically you're going to need to run the compute on something, right? So you need some servers. Uh, you're going to need some additional hardware or software, rather, on the hypervisor side or Microsoft licensing or some additional capabilities that unlock some really cool secret sauce on say data domains uh, box, the ddboost does that. Uh, the HP store once uh, has something called Catalyst, which is a, a, a software component that makes things go faster. Um, that's an optional add-on there. You've got production storage opportunities, backup storage opportunities. You've got the opportunity to sell your cloud services. So backup as a source service and DR as a service. There's kind of this infinite wave of, of adjacent technologies that you can sell alongside Veeam to really uh, capture as much of the spend from that customer as possible. So we're, we're really proud of that. And we don't compete with any of you guys on this, right? We don't make our own hardware. There's a lot of, of uh, backup products out there uh, that are either appliance only, right? Think of, of kind of new entrants like, like Rubrik and Cohesity, or there's kind of the, the older guys that have been around for a while that offer dedicated appliances from like Commvault and NetBackup. Uh, Avmore obviously is the, the, the king there. So uh, that's all taking out that, that storage margin for you guys by, by bundling it together. So we're able to really provide this, this best of breed solution for that customer that maybe is standardized on Cisco servers. Great, we can throw a Cisco server in there and it can run the Veeam software. You could even have a Cisco server that runs the backup storage, right? That runs as the backup repository, those big, you know, four U boxes that hold like 48 disks. We have great solutions and reference architectures for those. So there's a lot of opportunity here alongside just uh, selling the Veeam software itself. We don't like to see a uh, quote with just Veeam on it. I mean, we don't mind, but we know for you guys, uh, you're going to be better off if you got a lot of other stuff on that quote. And then finally, uh, one last little, little thing to tout. Um, we're actually going after the competition a little, uh, little more than we have in the past. Uh, we're actually dedicating direct uh, promotions to it. So if you've got customers, um, and this is for pretty much any customer, right? We don't have any minimum limitation on this. Really, it's just any deal regible size uh, uh, customer, which I believe is like two or three sockets. Um, we can actually provide some additional discounts to that customer if they're switching from a, a competitive solution. And we don't care what competitive solution it is. There's a drop down box within the deal registration page that you can select a competitor, but you know, if that competitor that they're using isn't there, just select other, and that's fine. Um, we really want to capture as much market share from some of the, the legacy guys that are already installed as possible, right? So think the backup execs, right, and, and Storagecraft and Acronis and those guys that have been out there for a long time, and they have a large install base, and their customers maybe are, are coming up for a renewal, right, and they're evaluating other options as part of that. So we can provide a 20% discount. It doesn't come out of your pocket. Uh, it's 20% discount, comes out of Veeam's pocket. And then if it is one of those new uh, business opportunities, you'll get an additional 6% of margin for bringing it to us. So just a, an incentive there uh, to really help those, those SMB customers, typically is, is who takes up on this, uh, uh, switch from whatever their existing legacy solution is to Veeam without incurring a lot of uh, additional costs, right? Because they've got the sunk costs already in there from the additional product they've already had. Uh, buying Veeam versus just renewing the maintenance for something else is usually going to be more expensive. This helps to offset that, and it helps you tell the story, and it helps you sell other stuff to capture that additional 20% uh, of margin that they're not spending with Veeam. So hey, with hey, that, Blake, I, that's I, all I got. Go for it. Yeah, well, I have a question. Um, yeah. So will you personally or will Veeam – be at the uh, the Microsoft Inspire conference in in July in Washington D.C. I am I'm certain we have a whole team dedicated to Microsoft, both on the product marketing <laughs> side and the uh, the alliances kind of management side, the people that actually interface with Microsoft and do build joint go to market activities and 
stuff like that. I, I'm sure they will be there. I won't personally, but uh, at least okay. I haven't been asked yet. I may be. I don't know. <laughs> those, those are sometimes emails you get pretty late and say, hey, we got another pass. Buy a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. No, you guys are active. You're, you're, you're out and about. I'll give you that. Um, well, it looks like the deck is clear. So, uh, you know, these people, they, they like to get back to the salt mine, and time is money. So, um, Blake, thanks for uh, having a chit chat with our community today. And, folks, you'll be getting a, uh, a thank you letter or a thank you note with uh, resources and links and information. Um, this time it's going to come from Jenny, and appreciate you attending. We'll see you next week. Carl Palachek on Wednesday, another webinar on Thursday. Like, thanks again. Thanks again for providing some, some real content. Oh, absolutely. Anytime, guys. Thanks for having me. All righty. Well, everybody have a great day. Thanks all.